James Lynch here from Middle Easy. Happy to be joined by Macy Barber, who's coming off an impressive win over Montana De La Rosa last weekend at UFC Fight Night. Macy, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing awesome, but I did not pick up a dominant win on the weekend. Uh, you know, going into the fight, the odds were, were kind of even, but uh, you really went out there and put it on, or uh, were you expecting the fight to be that dominant? Yeah, that's how I expect every fight of mine to be. You know, I go out there for a finish, and um, I was definitely trying for it the whole time, but she's she's definitely a tough girl, and uh, I got to dominate the entire fight for three rounds, which was great because I needed more time. You know, just to have more time in the octagon was um Always something that even though, you know, definitely going out, getting a finish and having an early night is great, but also getting that experience and that time in the cage is, is also a great thing. So I'm very happy with the performance and uh, I'm already back in the gym. And great to go to the judges scorecards and, you know, not have to worry about it being close. Like, I think you won every yeah. round of that fight, right? Like there was no sort of question at all. I, I'm sure, you know, going in, you're just like, doesn't matter. I've got this. There's no problem. Yeah, there is not a not a single question in my mind. Like, did we get this? Um, so I, yeah, I definitely got the win. Definitely got the very decisive win. Um, and it felt really good. Anything about her in the fight surprised you? I know you scouted her really well. You know, she, you're both from LFA. I'm sure you knew about her for a while. Uh, and we sort of even talked pre-fight about, you know, I think she was at Factory X at one point, but you guys never trained together. Um, was there anything in the fight, though, that was unexpected? Uh, yeah, I mean, we ran into each other, not really training wise, but just like being around each other, um, fought in LFA. I remember wanting to fight her a long time ago. Um, and her saying that like the fight never got offered to her. Um, so that was like, I tried to fight her and then didn't end up happening. And then we got scheduled and then she got injured, then I got injured and then we got rebooked. So, I mean, it, it's just been like a back and forth, like making that fight. Um, and then finally having it happen. But in terms of in the fight, uh, she wasn't nearly as strong as I thought she was, you know, going to be in her wrestling, obviously. Like, um, I feel like that was the biggest like respect that I gave her was in her wrestling, you know? And, and, uh, when she went into an interview saying that she could wrestle and she didn't think she, I was a good wrestler or that her wrestling was going to be way superior to mine. I was like, no, I, I know that mine's more than, like way better than yours. Um, and even in the cage, you know, I noticed she was breathing really heavy and I just felt like she tired out really fast as soon as I broke her um, and she realized that she had nothing for me. So, um, I mean, overall, I mean, the, all the game plan that we had and all the training that I put in, everything, everything happened the way that I felt like it was going to and the way we planned for it. How much of a difference was it having that extra time at Team Alpha Male? You know, I know when you first fought Miranda, right? It was only, I think, it, it hadn't been that long that you had been there. But now going into this fight, you had like, I think it was almost a year going in and, and getting to train there. How much of a difference was that in the cage? I mean, it helped a ton just being settled in and like grinding with the entire same team and um, just putting in that work and building that confidence and in the coaches and in the team and in the environment that I'm at, you know, I felt really happy and, and it was a, it, it is a really good environment. So I'm really pleased with the way the camp went and it definitely was a lot longer. Obviously I got injured and was supposed to fight. Um, but I mean, even going into the uh, Miranda Maverick fight, like that was a very new switch for me. So yeah, it was, it was pretty new. Um, and I was just getting like settled in and all of that. So for me to have the rest of the year to kind of, you know, get acclimated to the gym and to the system and all of that, it was very helpful. Uh, and I just foresee like the future being um, more and more um, dominant and comfortable and just a, just a good uh, camp for me. How did you celebrate after a big win like that? Gosh, what did I do? I flew home. So I flew, we went out, obviously we went out uh, and had dinner with the corner and the team and um, all the people that I had out uh, to watch the fight. Um, but then I flew home the next morning at like seven in the morning. And then uh, I went right out to Colorado the next day to meet my niece. So it was very <laughs> like relaxed, but at the same time, I was so excited to go and see her and meet her. Um, it was just really good. That's great. Um, one thing I, I don't think we talked about leading into the fight, but I saw you know a post on Instagram about it. You work with Tyler Mitten for your weight cuts. Like, how much of a secret weapon is he? Because I know he doesn't get a lot of shine in, in sort of the media, but he works with a lot of athletes, and I know everyone really likes working with him. How how crucial is that in your camp getting to work with him? Yeah, I mean, I've been working with um, Tyler. I think he's done, gosh, almost all of a lot of my cuts. So 
and back in LFA, I started working with uh, Lockhart and all of that. And I met Ian um, and I worked with Ian Larios for um, all of my LFA fights and then into my uh, UFC debut. Um, so I worked with Ian for my UFC debut and Ian and Tim. Actually, I worked with both of them because we ended up being like friends. Uh, and then after that fight, so then when I fought uh, my first fight at 125, I went with Tyler and then I worked with Tyler ever since. Um, and I still can't stay in contact with all of them because Ian, Tim, Tyler, they're all very, uh, they're very great humans, but they're also very, very smart and intelligent people. Um, and they've all helped me a ton, but Tyler, I've definitely stuck with. He's, uh, he's very much like an older brother to me. And I worked with him for obviously a long time. He's helped me through, um, just working with a PI. He works a lot with Clint, like understands, they communicate, they connect. And it's really nice to have someone who works hand in hand with the UFC rather than like one person has their way, the other person has the other way. You know, it's really cool to see that. And so um, to have someone who works hand in hand with them is is very helpful. And and Tyler understands how to cut weight and how to cut weight healthy um, from the nutrition to the water, everything. Uh, I felt amazing, even though uh, I was on my cycle when I had this weight cut and that like. Oh, did you? Oh, I geez. Because I, I know how tough that is. Yeah. yeah, I didn't understand how hard it was until that was my first time. And I'm so thankful that I had Tyler there because there was times where like I was cutting weight and I was like feeling nauseous and feeling like I was going to throw up. And I was like, why do I feel like this? Because I was still sweating. But I was like two minutes in the sauna and I was like, no, nah, I got to throw up. And he was like, explaining it to me of like why that happens, how that happens um, and what you can do to kind of prevent it or how you can like switch things up to make it easier for you to cut weight. So like to have that knowledge there for one, it's not just that he helps you cut weight, but he also explains the entire process and helps you understand it so that, you know, someday if he's not there, I know how to do it because he instills that knowledge into me. Um, and I could probably go on for days of like how great he has been. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, so he's been very, very helpful and, and taught me a lot. And along with the friendship and, and just like that mentor um, throughout this career, you know, he's, he's a very great addition to my entire team. It's great. And should clarify something so people don't troll me for my, that comment I just made. I mean, the, a lot of women have missed weight because they were on their cycle. So the fact that you were able to get through <laughs> that and do it, just don't want people thinking, it is people are going to say, you know what you mean. I yeah. Yeah. I didn't yeah. think it was going to be nearly as difficult as it was. So I do yeah. understand the extra struggle, but at the same time, I was completely on a period and I did make yeah. 125.5. So it is, it is possible, um, yes. but it does suck. There you go. Um, when are you looking to get back in there? I know it's a fresh win. Any sort of uh, card you're looking at or what would be the ideal time for you to have that next fight? Yeah, we're actually um, in conversation. Nothing has been mm. like announced. Nothing's been confirmed, um, but we're already in like the conversation of that. So hopefully I will have some fight news in the next few uh, days or a week or so. Um, can, can, yeah, I throw, can I throw a date out I'm there? Because, you know, you know, this would kind of make sense. I think with the timing, it didn't seem like you took much damage. Is international fight week kind of what you're looking at? Because I know a lot of fighters want to get on that card. There's a lot of women's fights on there already, too. <laughs> I feel like you have a Just, just blink ball. twice, Macy, and then we'll, like uh, we'll go over. Okay, there we go. There we go. Just blink deny. twice. Just blink twice. There you go. It's all good. <laughs> I'm not um, or deny, but... For sure. Perfect. <laughs> and, uh, and, and in terms of opponents, I guess you just leave that up to your management, your coaches and all that. I mean, I know you're someone that, you know, you just, you got, you got two wins now. So just sort of moving forward. Right. Yeah. I mean, I talked to, obviously I, I said it in my other interviews, you know, the UFC has a plan and they've never offered me someone that I've been like, no, I don't want to fight them. Um, <laughs> so well, we'll just see, you know, we already had a couple of conversations of, of who and when and where. Um, and so it's just a matter of, you know, the details and and one side and the other side and all of that so um it'll be soon though <laughs> okay no that's good um and then uh just you know something we've talked about even pre-fight but i'll bring it up again like you know the youngest champion thing now that that's kind of out of the way and there's not as much pressure not as much expectation do you just feel like more is the pressure off a bit like do you just feel like we're finally getting to see you kind of more relaxed out there not having to worry so much about that expectation and you can kind of just show your true skill set i know you feel like you're going to be a champion still but there's not that expectation of i got to do this by a certain date right yeah i mean yes and no i mean i always wanted the expectations and i like to keep the pressure on myself because i like to 
I like to push myself towards big things. Um, mm -hmm. But for me, obviously, like I went for it. You know, I spoke it. I went for it. Um, unfortunately, the world had other plans for me. You know, God decided to <laughs> teach me some other lessons. So uh, definitely dealt with the injury and the ACL reconstruction and definitely threw off my timeline. So um, I'm never going to not set big goals. So for me to to shoot for being the youngest champion, I felt like that was the right thing to do at the time. And it gave a lot of people a lot of things, you know, a career to follow. And I, and I know that I have a lot of fans and the supporters from that. Um, and I'm thankful for them. And I know that they will uh, continue to support me, even though I'm not going to be the youngest champion in the UFC. Uh, but there could be, you know, I could be the youngest female champion. I could be um, one of the dominant champions, you know, like it is, I'm still going to be the champion and I'm still pushing for that. So um, it is going to happen in the future and uh, just not at 23. <laughs> There you go. No rush. No rush, as yeah. they say. Um, wanted to ask you, speaking of champions, we've got a championship fight in your old division, strawweight uh, rematch between Rose Nami Yunus, Carla Esparza. I was curious who you think wins that fight uh, coming up here pretty soon. Rose is just, I, I have a lot of respect for Rose. Obviously, Carla Esparza is great too. Um, but I just feel like when Rose is on, she's on and she's a, she's a very fun fighter to watch to me. Um, so I, obviously, I, I want Rose to continue to to be successful and to win and and i would love to see her shine um and yeah that's that's kind of my pick and that's who i'd want to win what about Oliver and gaethje that's also a big fight in the I'm lightweight going division with i have to go with gaethje because I, I was gonna say i kind of knew that but rose, i had to ask anyway i've trained with trevor i've trained with rose i've trained with gaethje like all of those guys are i have a lot of respect for them and um they've always helped me you know as i was coming up uh, when I was younger. So I'm always going to go with Gaethje. He's a, he's a, he's a huge inspiration and, um, yeah, I would love to see him shine. Before we get out of here, did you see the whole thing with Mike Tyson on the airplane where the fan was bothering him and Tyson was like, ah, we're not having that. Did you see that? I think I saw that when someone was playing it during my weight cut. I think they like showed us a little clip of it. Um, I didn't pay too much attention to it, but, uh, I guess he like, why would you lesson. bother Mike Tyson of all people? Like, lesson. he still got it, you know? So, I, I don't know. I don't get that. That's crazy. People, people just have too much freedom these days of, like, have no care in the world for other people. It's, yeah. It's no, it's it's not good. Um, And then, obviously, we're, we're seeing now, uh, you know, all these MMA guys calling out boxers. Do you like that? Like, do you want to see a Kamaru Usman fight a Canelo Alvarez? Does that interest you at all? I feel like super fights are where the money is, you know? Honestly, mm. um it's great to be dominant in one sport, but when we get to see the super fights and them cross over, I think it's really cool to give that opportunity to both the UFC athletes and also to the other sports. Um, I don't mind it. You know, if someday if that happens for me, I'm definitely going to go for it. So why not? You know, I'm going to support. Oh, there we go. So, so are you really officially, cool to yeah. see, you know, it's, it yeah. is really cool to see um, the crossover, you know, and it gives, it brings, I feel like it brings the fans from both sports to the other sport. So, you know, you can bring boxing fans over to MMA. You can bring MMA fans over to boxing. So I feel like it's it's a benefit all the way around. Before we get out of here, I wanted to ask you, uh, you know, your division, there's a lot going on right now. Like you, you had a really good win recently, but there's been a lot of other names in your division. I'm just curious, who has impressed you the most out of this group of women that I'm going to mention right here? Casey O'Neill, Man on Furio, and Aaron Blanchfield. Out of all of them, and I know you're supposed to fight Aaron, so I want to keep preface by saying that, but who out of that group has, has impressed you? I don't know. I'm sure you're paying attention to the rest of the division. I guess if in terms of just names, I feel like mm. I've heard more about Casey O'Neill than I have about any of the other girls. The first time I ever heard of Erin Blanchfield was when I was offered a fight with her. Um, okay. So at first I was just like, I didn't know who that was. Um, and then the other girl, I haven't watched her too much, but I know that she's she's had some success. Um, but uh, I'm going to throw my name in there, so... No, absolutely. Well, that's what's so exciting right now. Like that. Well, no, if you think about it right now, Valentina has beat a lot of the contenders in your division. And I feel like we're seeing this new wave, yourself included, uh, mm -hmm. coming through here. And and I think it, it's like you must be excited of what the future holds because there's just a lot of variety right now in the weight class. Like a lot of the old guard has sort of been defeated. And now you're seeing fighters like yourself come through. It must be exciting. Yeah, for sure. It's great to see. I mean, all, all of us are young. I know Casey O'Neill's young. I know that... Um... Aaron's, I think Aaron's the youngest. I think she's 22 or something. Aaron's uh, young. So yeah. She's crazy. Uh, Corey's young. Uh, Miranda young. Maverick's young. You know, there's a lot of us that are up and coming that are, that are young, you know? Um, <clears throat> it kind of sucks to see uh, Miranda Maverick beat Sabina Mazo and, and Sabina to get cut. But I mean, 
that's kind of what you're going to see. That's, is, you know, you like, know, that's a fight that it's interesting because you guys almost crossed paths in LFA. It's too bad that fight never happened, right? So you and Sabina. Yeah, but I don't think Sabina would have made it to the UFC if she had fought me. So there you go. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, last question. I know your phone's uh, low on battery. What do you got planned the rest of the week? I know you're already back training. You're getting in the gym, but any, any plans for the weekend? Doing anything fun? Yeah, uh, Uriah Faber has that show, A1 Combat. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah. Yep. I, we have some fighters on there. Uh, so I will be actually at the event cornering. Um, it'll be on Fight Pass. So whoever is watching this interview, uh, definitely yeah. check out Uriah Faber's A1 Combat uh this sunday on usc fight pass there you go macy thanks so much for doing this i know you got a million thank things you. to do anyone you want to thank any sponsors any social media i'll give you the last word yeah i mean i have a ton of sponsors obviously um i just got kershaw knives um uh, monster energy has always been a huge supporter and a huge sponsor of mine um born primitive they are like everything i wear now is born primitive um and Bomar Nutrition, they are my supplement sponsor and they take care of all of my nutritional needs. Um, and then of course, uh, I wanted to preview, I am actually going to be launching an NFT. Ooh, uh, cool. So for anyone who is interested in getting more information as it comes along, it's not being launched until this summer, but it'll be macythefuture.io and you will get more information there. Uh, but I'm so excited. I'm working with Katana Capital and we are dropping a NFT where fans can get so much closer to me. We're going to do experiences. We're going to do um, giveaways. We're going to do, you know, some of my fight kits are going to be uh, put on there. Um, and then just like experiences like going on a jet ski adventure or um, potentially going on an elk hunt with me, stuff like that. Um, I'm very excited to be dropping an NFT this summer. So if you guys are interested, check it out, macythefuture.io for more information.